Hello and welcome back to HTML Tips and Tricks. In this lesson, we're going to lay the foundation for what we're going to be talking about for the next couple of lessons. And in this video in particular, I want to introduce the topic of semantic HTML. And some of this information might seem a little bit simplistic to some of you, but I need to make sure that we're all on the same page before we move forward. So what is semantic HTML exactly? Well, if you've been designing websites for over 10 or 15 years, then you're probably familiar with the B element for making your text bold or the I element, the I tag for making your text italic. You're probably also familiar with the old font tag, something we would never dream of using anymore. Well, these are all tags or elements that were designed to mark up the design of your document, to mark up what you want your content to look like. Semantic HTML, on the other hand, is markup that defines not what your document or what your information looks like, but what your information is. So we've graduated from using the B tag to make our text bold to using the strong tag. Because just that word strong means we want to make this text, this particular piece of text, strong. And we can make decisions in our style sheets and our CSS as to what that strong text is going to look like. Is it going to be bold? Is it going to be larger? Is it going to be a different color? That decision is made on the style sheet side of things so that we can separate the design of our site from the content of our site. Similarly, we've graduated from using the italics tag here to using the emphasis tag. Because again, the italics tag is defining a kind of a typeface. It's defining what we want our text to look like. Whereas the emphasis tag does just what it sounds like. It gives emphasis to a particular piece of text. And then in our style sheets, we would define what we want that emphasis to look like. And that's the idea behind semantic HTML. We want our markup to define what our content is, not what it's supposed to look like. So again, we're starting with this unsemantic version of HTML that you might have used 10, 15 years ago, where we're laying out everything using tables. Every table cell is basically a different section of content on our site. We have font tags everywhere. We have bold tags and italic tags everywhere. And if we go to Chrome and take a look at this particular page, this is what it looks like. Now, as far as the presentation of our document, we've achieved what we were going for. We have a header at the top. We have two columns of content, a sidebar and a main content area, and we have a footer at the bottom. So as far as our users are concerned, everything is just hunky dory. However, as far as machines are concerned, when they try to parse through this content and read through this content, it's a little bit of a mess because most of our content, most of our HTML markup is defining what we want this site to look like, not what this information contains. So as we move forward through history, we've upgraded a little bit. So we have this unsemantic HTML document, which you can find in your project files folder, and you can, you're welcome to look through that and see a bunch of examples of what you're not supposed to be doing with your HTML. But I'm going to open up another document here in our project files folder called semi semantic HTML dot HTML. So we're going to open that up. And just for the purposes of these videos, I've put our styles in the head of our document. Normally I would separate them into a separate file, but just for the sake of keeping our project files folder nice and clean, I've put it in the head of our document. So we have this semi semantic HTML document, which if we scroll down, looks a little bit better. We're using the strong tag now instead of the bold tag. We're using the emphasis tag now instead of the italics tag. And we're using divs that kind of tell us what this content is supposed to be. This is our main content area. Up here, this is our sidebar, and we know that because we have a div with an ID of sidebar. We also have a div up top with an ID of header. And if we go back into our browser and look at the semi-semantic HTML document, we see that it's structured very similarly with a few text and color changes from the first document we looked at. So again, as far as the user is concerned, everything's fine. But this is not a truly semantic document. When we're talking about the semantic web, we're not talking about using markup that allows other designers and other developers to easily see 
what your content is. And that's kind of what we've done here. We've given our div an ID of sidebar. We've given another div an ID of main content so that we can more easily tell just by looking at our code what each section is. And then in our CSS, we can point to those IDs in order to style them. Well, that's certainly a step in the right direction. We're no longer using tables for our layout. Instead, we're using divs with meaningful IDs. However, those IDs are only meaningful to your CSS file and to any developers or designers who might be looking at your code. These IDs or any classes that you use in your elements mean absolutely nothing when it comes to machines parsing through your HTML to see what kind of content you're using. And that's where HTML5 is taking a huge leap forward. We now have more semantic elements that allow us to mark up our code in a more semantic way. So if we open a third file here called semantichtml.html, we have a better example. So instead of a div with an ID of header, since machines don't know what that ID means, we actually have a header element now. Instead of a div with an ID of main content, we now have this section element. And it may seem on the surface that divs and sections are basically interchangeable. We'll discover later on that when it comes to the structure of our document, the section element is much more powerful. And then instead of a div with an ID or a class of sidebar, we have the aside element. And then at the bottom, instead of a div with an ID of footer, we have a footer element. And again, because of all of the CSS we've added here, if we go into our code or into our browser and take a look at this semantic HTML document, it looks exactly the same as our last document, but it's structured more semantically in a way that makes more sense to the browser or to any machines that come through trying to interpret that data. And you might be thinking, well, if it looks okay, then what's the big deal? If my site looks nice and pretty in the browser, then why does it matter if it's structured properly? Well, if it looks nice, that's okay for your user. Your user will like that. But if the structure isn't there, if your content isn't marked up semantically, then web crawlers and search engines are going to have a problem parsing your code and deciding how to rank your content in search engines. So your content needs to be well structured and marked up in a semantic way so that not only people can read your code better, but so that machines can read your code. Now, marking up your content semantically does more than just make your content more visible or make it make more sense to search engines. It also makes your content more useful. For example, a really good example of a semantic element would be the address element. So if you put some text inside an address element, your browsers and anything that's crawling your information is going to assume that that's some kind of contact information. And if your iPhone browser, for example, sees that address element, then it's gonna make it very easy for you to click on that address in order to take you to a map which tells you where that address is located. So by making your content more semantic, you're not only making it more accessible to search engines, but you're also making your content more useful. So again, just to emphasize the point, just because you're not using font tags and bold and italics tags anymore, doesn't mean that your code is fully semantic. And understanding the way that search engines and other machines parse through your code and read its structure will go a long way in helping you to understand how to make your site more useful, not just more attractive. So we're gonna use some of this information here as we move forward through the next couple of videos as we talk about how we can make our HTML just a little bit better. So thank you for watching and I'll see you in the next video.